Hey guys, it's Jim. How you doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm uh, here today and I'm excited to talk to you about Aurora HDR 2018. It's coming out today and it's amazing. I've been using it for about a week or so. Been playing with a lot of photos and I'm going to walk you through a couple of things here real quick. If I can find it, there it is. Um, they've done a number of different things to the uh, to update the product. There's uh, I gotta look at my list. The tone mapping has been improved. The results I'm getting are very natural, very subtle HDR. I love it. I'm really happy with this. Uh, details, colors, things like that are more realistic. And um, there you go. So there's a very natural looking HDR. Uh, you saw me load the brackets. I haven't done anything to it. And in fact, I'm gonna close the filters just so uh, you're not distracted. Um, it's got a new UI. I'm going to walk you through that here. It's got some new tools like an HDR enhancer slider, which is absolutely killer. I love it. Um, there's awesome new filters, lens correction and transform. I use those a lot now. And um, it just lessens your dependence on something like Lightroom because those are in Lightroom. But if you don't use it or haven't um, uh, you know, tried it, then you can do it in here. And it just lessens your dependence on Adobe, which is nice. Uh, there's a dodge and burn filter. Uh, there's a history panel. There's a lot of changes under the hood as well. So let's get started. This is the interface. Uh, you can open images, do batch processing. This is your zoom in and zoom out window. That's before and after comparison. That's to revert. This is your history panel. I can't click it because I haven't done anything yet. This is crop. Uh, there's been some changes here. There's more uh, additions as you can see here. And this is not a lengthy review. I don't have time to go through all of that, uh, but I just wanted to show you a few things. Uh, this is where you get to presets. Presets now load like this with the category selector there. Just click on that. You can see the different categories, including Captain Chemo and Serge Romilly, who provided some presets. I don't know if I'm going to do presets. I might create some for this. I'll let you know. Um, but there's a lot of different presets, and there's a cool new feature. So let me show you. Let's say you put this landscape HDR look. That's kind of grungy. Um, you know, actually, I'm not going to use that because it's kind of a little too much. Let me do this landscape realistic. I love that. I think it's a great looking preset. Well, there's now this overlay preset button. You just click that there. And what it'll do is automatically create a new layer. And then you can just go stick a, uh, another preset on top of it and like that. So now I've got the base layer with the first preset and this new layer that it was created with this uh, Misty Lands preset. And now I can do a before and after. You can see that comparison, and I can also, by the way, show you history, so you can see what was done there. So I'm going to uh, close the preset panel. I'm going to open the filter, and I'm going to hit reset. Now you've got, um, oops, hold on one second. There we go. You've got the histogram there. I'm going to open and close that. Here's the layers palette. Remember, I had the base layer and then the new layer uh, with two presets. I'm going to reset that, or excuse me, delete that layer because I don't need it now. And here's your base layer with uh, no. Um, actually, you know what? I need to reset that. There you go. Um, now it's with uh, <laughs> no uh, no adjustments on it. Um, that's layers. And then, of course, you have information here. You can see I did negative 4, negative 2, and 0. Three images, ISO 100, 16 millimeters at F11. This is Moraine Lake in Canada. It was a, just a beautiful place. Um, I'm going to close that as well. And by the way, this is your export and share uh, dialog box, as well as your ability to open it in other places like Luminar, for example. Um, so it's over there in the right-hand corner now, and I think you're used to it being in the left corner. So let me show you some filters. Uh, HDR Basic is your standard panel that shows up here. You've got temperature, tint, etc. You now have HDR Enhance. Now, what you're not going to see is clarity. And clarity has gone, and this has replaced clarity. And in my opinion, this is better than clarity. It works better. It's smoother. It's more realistic. It's more natural. And it just does a better job. I mean, you can see I'm at 75 on HDR Enhance. And look at the sky. It's not crazy. It's not all crackly and crunchy. I think it looks great, even though, frankly, 75 is a lot. Um, so that's HDR Enhance. I think you're going to love that. There's color. There's structure, just like before. There's denoise. Image Radiance had some improvements as well. You can just add this, and as you probably know from Image Radiance in the past, when you drag it, it adds a lot of shadow to the contrasty areas, makes them really dark. Well, now there's a shadow slider in Radiance, so you can just turn around and slide that to the right and lift some of those shadows. So you get the benefits of Image Radiance across the image, but you're able to pull back uh, some of the darkness away from those shadows. I think that's a great addition. Polarizing filter, right, works the same as it always has. More details, but they're more accurate and smoother. Glow's great. There's top and bottom tuning. 
You can also set orientation now, so you can move this around and uh, twist it and uh, you know do whatever you need to do within the image. I'm gonna turn that off because I'm not using it. And by the way, I'm not going through a full edit here. I just kinda wanna tell, you know, give you a first look and tell you what's new. Tone Curves has been there. HSL, new colors, right? You got orange now, which you didn't have before, and you've got uh, some magenta purples that weren't there in the uh, previous edition, so that's nice. Color toning is uh, still here, and then you got Dodge and Burn. This is really cool stuff. I love it. Um, all you do is you click Start Painting. You can choose Lighten or Darken. If you notice inside my little mouse that I'm moving around and sort of driving you crazy with, there's a plus sign. That plus corresponds to Lighten. Um, there's a minus sign under Darken, so if I hit the X key, you can see that it switched over to Darken on the menu, and I now have a minus key in here. So I can just go in here if I want to darken something, and I just choose my strength. I'm going to take that down to, let's say, 25. And, uh, you know, I can, let's say I want to darken the shadows a little bit on these, these trees. I know I just changed that a moment ago under image radiance, but we're just kind of playing here. So you can just do that, and boom, you're done. And that's how Dodge and Burn works. There it is before, there it is after. It works great. It's a wonderful tool to have. I've been using it on every image. Uh, vignette and all that so tons of cool filters lots of good stuff what I haven't told you about yet is lens correction and transform if you notice my edits sort of disappear for a moment while those filters come on so what I'm going to do and what I recommend doing is um, editing with lens correction and transform first before you start um, making edits to the photo itself like you know don't do HDR hands or any of the other sliders, saturation or whatever, do your lens correction and your transform first because they're really based on the original image. And um, even though if you make the filter adjustments first and then go back and do transform, uh, while you're doing it, the edits you've made are going to disappear, but they're going to come right back. So they're not gone, so don't get worried. Okay, here's a photo from Dublin. I shot it with a wide angle lens and I'm using this photo on purpose because if you look at it, it's a bit distorted. Uh, you get a lot of barrel distortion when you shoot with a wide angle lens and as you can probably tell, it looks like I'm kind of low and it looks like the building is kind of leaning backwards. Well, the building's not leaning backwards even though it's an Irish pub and there's probably a lot of drinking going on, although this was like six in the morning, so hopefully there wasn't any drinking going on then. Um, but you get my drift. So that happens. Uh, you also get a lot of pin cushion uh, distortion like with zoom lens. So look at this. You can come in here with the distortion slider in lens correction and you can just go like that to correct pin cushion. You can go like that uh, if, you know, if you need to uh, uh, fix the barrel distortion or vice versa. Um, anyway, you can move this around back and forth and that's pretty sweet. So what I would do because it was shot with a wide angle, I would actually drag it to the right a little bit, hit apply. And by the way, this is not an in-depth tutorial on the lens correction or transform. I'll come back and talk about those on another video. Um, but then I use these two in tandem, by the way. They work really well together. Next, I would go into transform. And here's where you can do some really cool stuff. So the one thing about the building leaning backwards is you can just kind of do this. And look at that. You're starting to straighten up that building. Now you can take the Y offset and drag it that way. And you start to bring it back to, uh, to looking like you want it to look. You might want to flatten it out a little bit with the in, uh, with the aspect and then maybe drag it forward a little bit with scale. And let me show you what I did to the image, the before and after, right? So in, uh, building leaning backwards and it looks like I'm low because it's a wide angle. And now without that, I've straightened that up and you can continue to refine it if you like. If you want to move more vertical, right? You can do just like that. And then you can do more Y offset to kind of slide it that way. It's really a uh, season to taste, as they say. But I've been able to take an image where the wide angle lens was showing a lot of distortion, and now it's not. So I love that. It's an uh, it's amazing tool. I'm really happy that it's in included in uh, Aurora 2018. I think you're going to love it too. Next, I would come in. I'd probably use HDR Enhance. I'd probably do a little smart tone. And I'm kind of riffing here because I don't want this video to go too long. I just want to show you a little bit about the, uh, the the tool here. So I might put a little polarizing on there just to bring the sky back a little bit. Uh, maybe some glow just for fun. Let's see. Yeah, why not? That makes a little bit fun uh, look in the sky. Top and bottom tuning. I might come in here to the bottom and just say maybe I want to lift the exposure a little bit in the foreground. You know what? I'm going to take that glow out. I don't really like it. So you just hit reset. 
Um, you can do all sorts of things, right? Hue, saturation, luminance is the same. It's just there's more colors. Split toning, maybe I could add a little bit of warmth to the sky just to try to give that a little bit more of the uh, sunrise kind of look. And there you go. That's not a final edit. I'm just kind of riffing here. Mostly I wanted to show you what it looked like before using the lens correction and the transform tool and what it looks like after with a couple of minor adjustments uh, with the sliders. But that's it. Aurora 2018 comes out today. I've got a lengthy uh, blog post on my blog. You can check it out in the link in the comments uh, below. Um, and you can get your copy now. It comes with a number of bonuses. There's a video from Trey. There's a bunch of other stuff, and I think you'll love it. So get in there, get your, uh, your special bonus price and your bonuses, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it, friends. I'll see you soon with more Aurora 2018 videos. And let me know if you have any questions, and adios. See you next time.